Welcome back to Idea Spotlight here on Beyond the Brick. I'm Joshua Hanlon, and today we have Legolomaniac with his Treasure of Barracuda project. And as always, I'd like to thank Clone Army Customs for helping make these live streams possible. If you are a fan of Lego Star Wars minifigs or accessories, definitely check out everything they have to offer over at clonearmycustoms.com. Lots of new releases happening over the next couple months there, so lots of cool stuff to check out. You can always find a link to their website in the description of this video as well. So we have a really, really fun, cool project for you today. Uh, the Treasure of Barracuda. It's a puzzle box adventure. So Lego Lomaniac, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, thanks so much for having me. And I really, really appreciate that. So I'm happy to be here. Yes. And this project, you know, the full photos alone pulled me in, but then you made a video for this that really shows it off so nicely. And that's what really, I think, uh, brings the project to life. So, but you also have the, the physical build there in front of you that you'll be able to, to show off how it works and everything. Um, so that'll be really yeah. impressive as well. So just start off then. Um, obviously, I think uh, it's interesting that you chose the the Treasure of Barracuda as the name for this project. Did you have kind of the the previous uh, uh, Barracuda ideas project in mind when working on this? Yeah. So uh, I started on this in April last year. So at that point, uh, the Barracuda set wasn't even out. So it wasn't because of the Barracuda set that I created this. But I thought it could be a really nice tie-in. Uh, and uh, I do absolutely love the Treasure of Barracuda set, as it's definitely one of the absolute best LEGO ideas sets ever produced. And since that's sort of been popular this year, uh, yeah, I sort of tried to fit it together and uh, and combine it into, or not combine it, but yeah, uh, get some relevance to the Barracuda set as well. Right. And when that set was released, I think it's gone over very well with fans. So that's a really good idea to try to tie that in because people responded to that really well. And I think uh, we should have a similar response to this set as well, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, that's sort of what I've been hoping hoping for. So this is a unique project because you've got kind of two different elements to it here. you got the map element and then you've got the, the puzzle box treasure chest element that we're looking at here. So when you started, kind of came up with this idea and started with this project, where which of which of these parts did you start with first? Oh yeah, I definitely started with the puzzle box itself. As uh, I would say, I'm not the most uh, skilled uh, Lego builder when it comes to design and and yeah and and visuals. So uh, I've started really simple with my earlier puzzle boxes that are basically just cubes and. Um, and it's really easy to put mechanics inside of a cube, and I don't really need to pay too much attention to the the overall visuals. And I sort of built upon from there. So when I started designing the the uh, the treasure chest or this treasure barracuda puzzle box, I started with the box to put as much as I could inside that, and then uh, held off on the map until the last moment, basically, because I was really nervous about starting that and. Uh, since I didn't really know m too much about how I would design that. But it seemed to have uh, turned out well, and it's prob probably the most creative uh, design I've ever done, uh, and most uh, most outside of my comfort zone, definitely. <laughs> yeah, so have you done a lot of puzzle boxes in the past, then? Is this kind of a build style that you're pretty familiar with? Yes, so um, it started a couple of years ago. Uh, I've built a... Um, uh, a um, a cake a cake box as I uh, I call it I started in um, it in sixteen by sixteen size mostly and that's what most of my puzzle boxes has been in um, so I I made uh, yeah the cake box and I made a some a gift box you can see them sort of up here I have a slight issues pointing yeah there's the gift box and yeah. the cake box is over here and after that I made the the sword box, uh, which uh, features uh, yeah a sword to pull out of it, they're all in sixteen by sixteen studs and almost sixteen high as well. Um, so I started with that in mind that I wanted the treasure box to uh, be in that size as well. But uh, a square treasure box doesn't look that well, so I extended it a little. But it's mostly this size and this format I've been building my puzzle boxes in. Yeah. 
And it is super impressive. It's amazing how many different kind of functions you can fit within one of these boxes. So when you go to, to sit down and plan this out, how does that work for you in terms of trying to imagine, you know, it's got to look nice on the outside, but still be functional and still fit all these different moving elements inside there? Yeah, um, I actually, um, I really want my puzzle boxes to look like something. Uh, I said earlier, I'm not really a visual designer, but I do try to do some visual design at least. Um, so uh, I made the outside visuals design of the box first before I even started on any of the inside mechanics. Uh, so, so I knew that I sort of had the final look of it. And then, then I can sort of look, lock down the, uh, the actual, actual visual design and format uh, before I start integrating any of the mechanics. So I know that will work. I, um, after nailing down the uh, the looks, I sort of start uh, thinking about what do I want the end goal of the puzzle box to be. Of course, this is a treasure chest, so it was very obvious what the end goal had to be, and that was was uh, of course unlocking and opening the treasure chest. Uh, but the other part, uh, which I is uh, how to start it as a puzzle box. Where do I want the first mechanics, and how do you sort of get to the point where you want to start the puzzle box? So. I tried to figure out those two sections first, like how should it end and how do you start? And then after I have those two, it, it's all about connecting those two with different mechanisms inside the box. And it's just just about shoving as much, much mechanisms and uh, things in there as I possibly can. And it's all uh, mostly designed uh, digitally first before I even start building any anything physical, except possibly prototyping a few small uh, me mechanisms or mechanics uh, before I even order all the parts and start building it. Uh, but yeah, it's mostly done digitally in uh, Brickling Studio. What pieces do you find work well for making these types of puzzles? Do you have a lot of like Technic gears and that sort of thing? Or can you stick with mostly basic bricks and just arrange them in a way that you know opens up these different functions? How, how have you found that works? Right. Um, so yeah, there are very, <laughs> there's a very diverse set of uh, mecha uh, mechanics in, uh, that in puzzle boxes like this. And the most basic sets of uh, pieces for uh, puzzles, uh, I would say, are tiles and plates, uh, event, uh, or possibly bricks. Uh, you can create a really, really diverse uh, puzzle box with using just tiles, bricks, and plates. As you need the tiles for pieces to slide across each other, as you can't have that with uh, just exposed plates, you can have those sliding on top of each other, of course. Uh, so you cover those with with tiles, and then uh, things can slide across and sort of get in each other's way, so the, they lock each other or slide out of their the way. So that would be the most basic of stuff. And the cake box mostly features only sliding things, except one a uh, tiny mechanism, which is uh, uh, one gear crank. And and that's the other part I really like in implementing in my puzzle boxes would be some sort of cranking mechanism. Uh, this one of, uh, features actually two. You have the key and you have that um, uh, that turning the, uh, the ship's wheel on the back of it. Oh, and you have using the amulet on the map. That's also a uh, gear mechanism. Uh, but mostly I work with plates and uh, sliders. Well, the sliders, as I call it, yeah, plates and bricks. I think that's really neat because, yeah, you, people don't have to have sort of like super specialized pieces to do these types of really cool builds. Like you said, you know, your basic plates, tiles, and bricks that pretty much everyone will have in their collection, you can still make these complex, fun pu puzzle builds. Yeah, exactly. So you mentioned the ship's wheel there, and that was when I was watching the video that you had made. One of the things that just like really blew my mind is when you go to the map and you uh, work with that and then pull the wheel out and then incorporate that back into the treasure chest. So yeah, yeah. talk about then the the map and how that uh, plays into the treasure box design and kind of how you work those two together. Right, yeah. Um, I don't quite sort of remember the initial spur of uh, the like, uh, idea I had for the map. It sort of just gradually uh, developed. Uh, but I knew at some point that I wanted to have the map and that it should uh, play some sort of role to it. And there's a few 
few different ways you can um, sort of um, interact with tools in a puzzle box. And to have two different, they would sort of look at uh, as two different puzzles in itself. But have two different puzzles interact with each other, you would need to use one of the uh, types of tools that you can use. And the important part about tools is that um, different tools can't be used for the same thing on the same box, or else, uh, like providing the amulet, it has an axle. So I have to make sure that no other tools provided can do what the axle does, or else the other tools would be uh, be pointless. Oh, um, yeah. And uh, the axle uh, turns the crank inside the map and reveals the ship's wheel. Uh, and the ship's wheel does not have an axle on the back. It has a Technic pin. Uh, so that goes on the back of the um, into the hole of the um, treasure box uh, into here, which has a Technic, well, not Technic, yeah, well, sort of a Technic rod that a pin can go, uh, yeah, sort of around and inside. And they sort of clamp together with friction. And that's not something the amul amulet can do at all. Uh, I can't push the amulet in here and I can't turn that with fingers or nails or anything. So only the ship's wheel can actually turn that. And, and the last is that I can't open the box with the amulet. Uh, I can't unlock it. That's only the key that can do that. And the key cannot uh, fit into this hole where the ship's wheel go either. So, so designing the map, I knew I had to have some sort of tool that was neither the axle or the key. And I've never used the ship's wheel like that before. but or, or a Technic pin to sort of drive a mechanism like that before. But that's sort of the third mechanisms I have. Well, I've not really developed, but uh, the third third uh, tool type I've used in my puzzle boxes. And since I, I, you can here use any type of Technic pin, but the ship's wheel, of course, fit really nicely with this, uh, with the uh, with the design. And I think that actually came across when I built the the Silent Mary set that I acquired last year, uh, which has that ship's wheel. And I was like, that can be used for something. Which, uh, <laughs> yeah, that is a really interesting design element, what you were touching on there. So not only do you have to have kind of the, the right tools and set up all these mechanisms correctly, but you also have to sort of make it cheat proof so that somebody can't you know cut through the steps and just use one tool for every step of the, the puzzle box. So you've got all these different elements then that you're kind of keeping in mind throughout the build process. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I should have been face. Yeah, that's really impressive work. So take us through the, de the design of the map itself then and kind of how you, you know, some great, very micro scale building that you incorporated there, kind of the layout of that map and what you went for with that. Right, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's uh, designed fully digitally first. So what I did was uh, I inserted the, um, well, in in the digital file, I uh, created a mechanism. So I figured out what the mechanism was first. And that's the mechanism is mainly in this area uh, here with the mountain and the race section. And after that, I covered that up with plates and then added more plates to sort of create some sort of transitional terrain down to the more flat side. So I had an entire thing, uh, entire build filled with filled with, yeah, it was basically just plates and that mechanism. And then sort of just started filling in with whatever I with whatever I could. I think I designed the river first, as it's uh, sort of the central point of the entire map. Uh, and I knew that the race section would need to be some sort of uh, mountain to, to cover the most of the mecha mechanism. And um, yeah. Um, You've got a great little like sort of village and some small buildings and stuff in there as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I wanted to. It's it's sort of a little more than a map, and as you said, it's more of a micro scale landscape. Um, and I've been really inspired by a friend of mine, Cass from Blockade UK, who builds amazing, amazing micro scale builds, and uh, also sort of uh, inspired by the uh, four uh, Minecraft micro world sets, the four first Minecraft sets that were released. Which uses exclusively like uh, one by one tiles to cover in the landscape. Uh, so uh, many has many have commented that it sort of reminds them of that those um, Minecraft sets, which I'm really happy about since they they look awesome. 
No, I Ooh. thought the same thing. It's got a really fun kind of Minecraft vibe to it, which is great. You know, you get all those bright colors and everything and creating those landscapes. Those sets can be super fun. So that's neat. Yeah. So. We, we have a question in the chat here from uh, our friend Brick Bakery. So he wanted us to, to ask you uh, how well you mentioned, you know, you use the digital designers. How well do those work for making these types of builds? Are there any kind of difficulties? What general advice would you have for people if they're building digitally for these types of projects? All oh, right, yeah, that is an interesting question. Since um, I find it works really well, but you sort of have to have um, what should I say? You need to have your head in the correct space, uh, since um, since it's really uh, difficult to um, simulate the interaction between elements. So I guess most Lego builders, uh, or or I, I shouldn't say most, but a lot of Lego building is building something static with some a few uh, few interaction designs, but you sort of know a door will swing open and, and such. Uh, while these have very particular ways they have to interact in order to work, like a slider needs to slide out a, sp a specific amount of um, length in order to uh, for another slider to slide, and that has to work, and they not, can't interfere with each other. That's not as easy simulating in the actual 3D environment uh, since uh, none of the tools really have any physics integration, um, they have they have collisions, so you can know if they actually collide with each other. But it's not perfectly accurate, and uh, you sort of have to move uh, move things manually. Uh, gears don't interact with each other, so um, cranking a gear or turning a gear won't make other gears turn correctly and things move along like that. So it's all about visualizing and thinking about how these mechanisms can work. And of course, uh, for specific mechanisms I'm unsure of, I prototype them physically first before I integrate them back in Vox. And uh, after creating it digitally, I order all the pieces and build them. And I usually have to build them multiple, many times, as, um, as there are some things that just don't work. The original design for how the ship's wheel interacted with the back of the Lego box, for example, did not work at all because it relies on friction. And if it's too much friction in the drive mechanism inside the box, the ship's wheel will just not do anything when you turn it, since the mechanism will be stuck. Um, so that mechanism inside had to be simplified down to a mechanism that was had less force in it uh, so uh, the ship's wheel could actually move it as well. So, so yeah, well, I don't know, that's it's sort of uh, a, a 3D design software or Lego Digital Designer or Bricklink Studio or, or Mechabricks works uh, wonders, I think, designing, uh, yeah, designing uh, Lego puzzles like this. Uh, of course, it's better when you have some experience uh, actually designing Lego puzzles so you know about the mechanisms. The first, Puzzle box I, I created, actually the first and second I created, was built fully physically before I designed them digitally. Uh, so uh, that's how I started, was uh, building the cake box and the gift box uh, in a physical manner the first times I did that. But after that, I found that I have more freedom in the 3D software as uh, it has all colors and all parts that I need, a lot more than what I have in my personal collection of parts. Right. Well, that's yeah. some some very good tips there. Uh, thank you. Oh, you have you have a, a new <laughs> live stream attendee joining you. <laughs> yeah, we have a little uh, a supervisor here for my uh, <laughs> builds. <laughs> I also wanted to ask you with with a project like this, is there any uh, fears that when if Lego turns this into a set and kind of tries to reach a, a general audience with it? that the puzzle box concept and how this all incorporates would be too complex for them to explain to a, a more general audience? Or do you feel like, you know, using instructions, they can uh, portray that in a way that a general audience can understand how it comes together and how it all works? That would probably actually be one of the major reasons, I think, why they would probably choose not to, uh, to uh, approve this if it ever got to the review phase, is that it's very important that make the... Um, the mechanisms uh, slide correctly and interact correctly with each other. And actually, uh, depending on if the parts are new or old or um, how you build it, and if you're, uh, you, um, you make sure all the parts are, are well, squeezed tightly together and pressed really 
firmly down or not. Uh, the different frictions of the different sliders could could be wildly wildly changed. Uh, so some sometimes so I build my boxes multiple times, and sometimes the sliders are really tough to slide, and sometimes they sort of just fall out of the box uh, if you just tilt it. Uh, so there's no real there's no big consistency there, unfortunately. And since Lego really wants their quality and everything to work, of course, then uh, that is an issue that would need to be solved. And and um, yeah, as you said, um, making sure people sort of understand the, the the concept of what they're building and while building it, that uh, they understand that these sliders that are sort of just put loose in the box are supposed to be loose in the box while building it, since they are not attached to any specific thing. Um, yeah, it could it could be a real challenge uh, with that, but I would be really if if it ever got approved, I'd be also really really uh, interested to see how a Lego designer would design such a set and how the puzzle aspect of it would be be um, affected as well. Yeah, I mean, I remember I, I've heard heard designers uh, several times tell the story about the the Voltron idea set when that was first, you know, hit ten thousand, and they the designers started looking at that. A lot of designers at first looked at that and were like, "There's just no way we can make this massive robot and make it all work together." Uh, but eventually, you know, they were the, they were able to pull it off, and you know, we got that awesome set out of it. So um, there are a lot of projects that I think even even the the talented Lego designers who work in Billund, when they first glance at it, might think you just can't do this, but you're given enough time and uh, creative effort. I think it's amazing what you can pull off. So uh, I'm sure there are definitely ways that it could happen between you know you and the the designers collaborating uh, if it reaches ten thousand. So it'd definitely be cool to see. Yeah, and um, yeah, you would have that aspect that uh, if the uh, pestle design internally would also be changed, then uh, the designer would also really re really need to be into puzzles to understand the concept of. Uh, of the puzzle mechanics itself as well, which would all be a be maybe be a slight different challenge to a Lego designer, which also would be interesting to see. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's a really fantastic project, so I definitely recommend everyone. We'll put a link to the project in the description of this video. Go check it out and lend your support over there. Help it reach ten thousand as soon as possible because these are the types of I think really original, neat ideas uh, that need support over on Lego Ideas. So. I, I'm a big fan of this project. For people who want to see, you know, maybe more uh, future updates on this project as well as your other work, what's the best places to to find you online? Yeah, so I have uh, I'm on Twitter for Legolomaniac. I post uh, post some stuff there. I have my YouTube channel on Legolomaniac as well, which you can see a videos on all my puzzles. I post uh, all of them there. I haven't made updates for puzzles before, but updates for this specific project will come in the future as I have some design thoughts in mind, like redesigning the amulet to look more piratey, for example. Uh, so, And I'm on Instagram as the underscore Legolomaniac, as someone has Legolomaniac there already. Uh, <laughs> That's always uh, annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. And on Flickr, I post some uh, some photos. I'm not really active there, but photos are there. And, um, and uh, you can also check out my puzzles on my website, legolomaniac.com. So yeah, just search Legolomaniac, and you will find most of my my access. Perfect. Yeah. So definitely make sure to check out all of his work online. Well, thank you so much for, for joining me today and for taking the time to explain all the different aspects of your project here. It's certainly a really neat idea. So I wish you the, the best of luck going forward with it. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. It's been uh, really fun. And uh, yeah. For sure. And thank you to everyone who uh, joined us live and for everyone tuning in. Uh, we always appreciate you watching. We'll be back soon with more uh, weekly live streams and episodes of RID.